Terrans are the bane of store managers across the world. Their almost superhuman ability to create gargantuan scale problems from micro-sized issues makes for hilarious viewing for those wanting to see an adult freak out over benign and often fictional situations. However, even before the public were permanently armed with the ability to digitally record every moment of their lives, Karens existed. But for you to hear about their antics, they would have to perform something an order of magnitude so entitled that it would make the news. But in the mid-90s, a boss-level Karen named Ellie Rovella raised the bar to unprecedented new heights by actually getting major American retailers to stop selling Primal Rage for the Sega Genesis. The following tale of stupidity and surprise begins in 1994. Street Fighter 2 fever was in full swing, with punters lapping up Capcom's incremental update, Super Street Fighter 2, which had just been released on Sega's Mega Drive and Nintendo's, well, Super Nintendo, obviously. The one-on-one -on -one fighting craze was allowing Capcom to practically print its own money. And it wasn't long before the bandwagon started to become crowded with copycats. The gamut ranged from the true classics like King of Fighters and Mortal Kombat, all the way down to utter chaff like Shaq Fu and the unbelievably terrible Rise of the Robots. Joining the bottom of the pile, rubbing shoulders with Brian May audio clipping CGI cyborgs and retired basketball players, was Primal Rage from Atari Games. Although graphically impressive back in 1994, there was no escaping just how dire the gameplay was, and that it was paired with a command list which required the user to process Rain Man levels of retention to memorise. However, because it was an arcade game, and most people just had quick blasts on it, the quality graphics, fast gameplay and dinosaur gore meant it became popular with pundits of sticky floor rooms. So Atari licensed the game out to home consoles during 1995 and 1996. The four biggest versions were the SNES, Mega Drive, Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation. And although it's the Mega Drive version we'll focus on in a moment, there is a strange glitch on the PS1 port. If you play your disc on a PlayStation 1 console, you'll encounter problems with the numerous music tracks failing to actually begin during gameplay. However, if you get that exact same disc and put it in your PlayStation 3, it'll play without any issues. Isn't it weird? Anyhow, on one fateful day in 1996, Ellie Rovella went to a game store, picked up a copy of Primal Rage for the Sega Genesis, totally ignoring the 13 plus age rating on the front of the box, and then proceeded to give it to her 11 year old son. The boy, armed with a Game Pro strategy guide, then began playing as the gorilla character Chaos. He practiced and practiced, and soon he was able to perform the finishing move called the Golden Shower, in which Chaos urinates acid over his fallen opponent and causes them to dissolve. The boy was so proud of his accomplishment that he showed his mother, and this was the exact same moment that feces and fans collided at great velocity. The mother immediately went full on Karen mode and drove back to the store, Primal Rage clutched in her angry hands. Straight away she insisted to see the manager, first for a full refund and then to demand that the store stop selling the game, which unbelievably they did. Emboldened by her success at preventing the public from playing a game featuring fictional claymation monsters, Ellie imposed her insanity and self-importance across the whole country by starting a grassroots campaign against Primal Rage being sold. These days, a Karen might create a viral Facebook post or even make it to a local news story. However, these are trivial things compared to the antics of Ellie Rovella. She campaigned to media at a local and national level. She protested to US senators, and she even set up a free phone 800 number as a means for people to get in touch over this stupidity. But did this have any actual effect on Primal Rage being sold? Well, yes, actually. In Ellie's home state of Arizona, retailer Target removed the game from its 22 stores. Rival retailer Best Buy, however, went even further and removed Primal Rage from every single one of its 251 stores across the country. 
What isn't clear, however, if this was just the Sega Genesis version or not. The SNES version didn't actually contain the urination move that offended Ellie, as that wouldn't have gotten past Nintendo's family-friendly censors. But seeing how ridiculous this censorship campaign is, it wouldn't surprise me if it applied to all versions of Primal Rage. Now, while all of this nonsense was going on, Primal Rage's publisher, Time Warner Interactive, didn't exactly appreciate their sales taking a severe nosedive, thanks to this woman. So, decided to deliver their own special brand of corporate passive-aggressive key facts. They stated that Rovella never tried to contact them and just went straight to the media. They said that normally they tried to resolve issues themselves and often issue refunds for unhappy customers. <laughs> yeah, right. Time Warner also stated that this was the first major complaint they had heard of, despite the game being played by millions of gamers. But most importantly, they pointed out the elephant in the room, that the child was just too young to be playing the game in the first place, as per the ESRB rating printed on the front of the box. Upon the news of the game being pulled from store shelves, gamers smelt censorship in the water. And because this was still the 90s, instead of writing ridiculous Twitter posts or starting pointless change.org petitions, they started to write letters to various media outlets and the senators in defense of Time Warner Interactive. And if this story couldn't get any crazier, while gamers smelt censorship, at the same time, Hillary Clinton could smell votes and gave a press conference for a bill she wanted to push that would curtail the sales of games with violence. Hillary's press conference on the matter, however, was so hilariously bad, it's still funny to this day. <laughs> it's almost routine in popular games for players to spray other people with Uzis, and in some cases, even to engage in cannibalism. What? What games in 1996 involve people eating each other? Players commit gruesome acts like these using top-of-the-line graphics in stunningly realistic detail. Players commit gruesome acts like these using top-of-the-line graphics in stunningly realistic detail. Now, it is up to adults whether they wish to expose themselves. A choice your husband wrestled with on a daily basis. <laughs> everybody knows lead poisoning is bad for children. Oh, I want everybody to know that exposure to violent video games is also bad for children. Yes, a totally fair comparison and definitely not scaremongering whatsoever. And this is where the media reporting of this whole affair ends, unfortunately. Maybe the press came to the realisation that following the vitriol of a mad woman who has done zero research into what she was ranting about, and a clueless first lady, all seemed a bit, well, silly. However, it is possible that this ban had more ramifications than many first realised. For example, Atari Games was working on Primal Rage 2 for arcades, to the point development had gotten to near completion. But around the same time the controversy surrounding the home version arose, Atari Games was acquired by Midway, and a few months after the acquisition, Primal Rage 2 was quietly cancelled. Seems quite bizarre Midway would cancel a game that was almost finished and had a high chance of turning a profit. What seems more likely, considering the huge amounts of negative hysteria Mortal Kombat had already brought them, Midway just didn't want to have the deal with the same headache of some lunatic Karen going on a nationwide tirade and crashing sales again. So, well done Ellie Rovella, you put an end to all those fictional farting dinosaurs, you utter, utter mentalist. Hello you, thanks ever so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified. And be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon. But thanks again for watching. And until next time, friends, I'm missing you already.